Hello everyone, how's it going? And welcome to my Wild Rift tier list for patch 5.1. So many changes this patch to items, champions, the meta in general is just absolutely bonkers right now. Everyone is just one-shotting everyone across the map, which means that some champions have moved up in the tiers, some champions moved down in tiers. We've had removal of items. So many changes have happened in this patch. And obviously, I have to give you all an up-to-date look at the tier list. It's been one week now since patch 5.1 and also the start of Season 13. I've been grinding a lot of ranked, obviously, mainly in AD carry role. But also, I've been grinding a lot in every single other role as well on different accounts just to give you all the best tier list that I can give to you all. But before we get into the tier list... I'm going to quickly give you a sneak peek on something that we've been working on. Uh, we are currently working towards getting our item tier list coming out, which is going to be really, really exciting. I mean, as you can see, I haven't done anything at the moment with the item tier list, but we've got the physical items, the magic items, defense items, boots, and also boots enchants. This is a really exciting tier list that um, I, I've been, you know, asking for for quite some time with the developers. So really excited to get into this and obviously tell you all about some of the items, especially some of the new items as well, which I think I'll, I'll be, you know, talking about quite a lot today with some of the champions. Yeah, thought I'll give you a little sneak peek of that one. So let's get into the tier list. First up in the barrel lane, I think one of the big meta shifts in the barrel lane uh, was to do with the removal of Holebreaker. It, there were some champions that built Holebreaker, you know, 100% of the time, you know, champions like Garen and Sion and other champions like that. Even champions like Fiora and Camille could also go for Holebreaker. And obviously re them removing Holebreaker means that these champions are maybe not as strong as what they were before. Uh, but also this is just a pretty big shift in terms of the way Baron laners play now. There's going to be a lot more grouping. There's going to be a lot more team fighting involved with these Baron laners. And it means that other Baron laners can now be viable because they're not having to defend all the time in the Baron lane to these split pushers that are just building Holebreaker all the time. So it opens up some new champions, but also it means that there are still some, some, some familiar faces in the bound lane first up atrox insane amount of crowd control crazy amount of damage as well you can go two separate type of types of builds you can either go for the full damage atrox or the bruiser atrox a lot of healing a lot of crowd control a lot of damage in general overall just an insanely annoying champion to deal with Renekton, you can run Conqueror. You can also run Presti Attack as well. Both of these runes work completely fine. Presti Attack is a bit more aggressive. If you can, if you feel like you can get an early advantage, then Presti Attack is really good. But Conqueror is also pretty good as well. Just get that stacked up very quickly. But Renekton, obviously, as I mentioned, with Holebreaker now not being a thing, it means that Renekton has a bit of an easier time with grouping up and making sure that he can be a big impact during team fights. Jax never really built Holebreaker last patch. It was like kind of a situational item. You can build it on Jax, but I think Jax in general didn't really build it at that much. But also because Jax now has the light version of the Rift Maker, meaning that he can just get more true damage, more healing as well. And also just items in general for Jax are just really, really powerful at the moment. Urgot, even after the nerfs, is still an incredible tank and also does incredible damage as well. I don't think the champions really move too much. I think the champion is just still incredibly powerful at the moment. Akali, one of the best AP champions in the entire game at the moment. She benefits from every single item that got changed this patch or buffed or whatever you want to call it. Death Cap, Infinity Orb, Rift Maker, all these items just do insanely well and synergize really well with Akali. So that's why she sits up in the S plus tier. And Orn as well. Orn, in my opinion, one of the best tanks with Urgot as well. Obviously, Urgot's a little bit different because he's a tank slash bruiser. But in terms of a full tank, I think Orn is one of the best out there. Laning phase, really, really nice. You have a lot of crowd control and also a lot of survivability. But also when he joins into team fights as well, he can be such a big nuisance. He also can be just really, really powerful in general. So that's for the S plus tier. I mean, in terms of S tier as well, there are probably some champions that can definitely move up. You know, champions like Fiora and Camille, even Gwen can move up as well because how the AP items benefit her a lot. But I did move Fiora and Camille down because I just don't think they're as strong as the other Baron laners at the moment uh, near the top. Obviously, we have Garen. Garen's still up here just because he's really easy to play. He still has quite a few items to build, even if he doesn't have Holebreaker now. And just overall, is quite a nice and easy champion to play. Jay still has a lot of poke and just a lot of damage in general. And I still think the champion is very powerful. As I mentioned, Fiora and Camille still has the same benefits. I think Fiora less much because she's not as useful in team fights. She was one of the champions that benefited a lot with Holebreaker. But Camille can just still join team fights from the Baron lane and still benefit a lot from her Hextech Ultimatum. 
and also just being able to lock down a target and just be a really powerful team fight champion gwen's still in the s tier as well again items like rift maker um, got buffed infinity orb death cap these are items that gwen loves i was honestly tempting to move gwen up into the s plus tier just because of how just because how strong ap champions are in general at the moment because of the new items scion still pretty decent even if he doesn't have hole breaker anymore you can still use demolish you can still uh, split push in side lanes you're not going to be as strong as what you were before but you can still be the same annoying tank that Scion can be but i think with items like you know death cap infinity all being strong and also with the ruin infinity edge now being really really strong i think that champions have a bit of an easier time now to try and break through these tanks Barris still has the same drawing potential in the barrel lane and still can make a difference in fights obviously if you can get your ultimate off and if you can stick keep stacking your ultimate then it works pretty well set again with the crowd control again another really good champ uh, champion uh, really good at just stacking hard steel and titanic hydra Dr. Mundo is a tank, really good against the AP champions, and I think really strong in general just because of how many AP champions are being played in the meta at the moment because of all these items. It's a champion that doesn't really get burst down 100 to 0, and the great thing about Dr. Mundo is that even if he does get burst by AP champions, he can just heal it back up again thanks to his ultimate and also his other abilities. Uh, Shen doesn't have Holebreaker. Didn't really build Holebreaker anyway, to be fair, in the side lane, but Shen, in terms of split pushing, has such a better time now in the Baron lane. I think Shen is one of the best split pushing champions still one of the best split pushing champions thanks to his ultimate and now he has an easier time pushing in the side lane because he's not going to have hole breaker or anything like that to deal with so i think shen got a pretty big buff this patch with hole breaker being removed uh kenan and timo these are two ranged champions that i think could do very well in the barrel lane uh, a bit hit or miss at times uh, at times especially kenan sometimes you could join a team fight and make a huge difference sometimes you join a team fight get exhausted and then you're useless for the whole fight uh, but Timo as well, super annoying to deal with, especially with these melee champions in the game at the moment. Um, you could just be a nuisance in the Baron lane, and you can also use your shrooms to be annoying during team fights. But both these champions can still work pretty well. Vladimir overall is very, very powerful. I just think he's not as good in the Baron lane as what he is in the mid lane. In the mid lane, he just has a lot of better matchups, especially against some of the mages and assassins. Whereas in the Baron lane, he struggles a little bit against these bruisers that are a bit beefier and a bit tankier. Uh, Tank Yasuo. Baron lane still pretty decent um you can still do really well and just the champion's really annoying to deal with irelia also still really good i think irelia is just a very skillful champion and a champion that has a high skill ceiling same with riven as well both these champions have a very high skill ceiling that's why they're lower in my tier list because i i mean i think they're strong champions i just don't think that every single every single player can kind of pick it up and do pretty well with it uh malphite one of the weaker tanks to be fair i think the it, yes he still has ways in which he can win fights you know with his ultimate and everything else but i think the other tanks above just have a lot of an easier time same with gragas as well i haven't seen ap like full ap gragas barrel lane but i wouldn't assume that's any good you kind of just want to build tank gragas in the barrel lane which is just not as good at the moment uh volley bear pretty decent you know you can go hard still you can go trinity force and be pretty decent in the baron lane yone as well pretty decent not too bad wukong just hasn't really hit uh ever since the rework uh i did put him in s before i have moved him down in down into a tier i think in a jungle wukong is pretty good but i think with so much less sustain now for wukong with his first ability the extra armor is quite nice the extra health regen is nice from the passive but i think the big thing of why wukong was so strong in the baron lane before was because his first ability had that huge massive burst of healing uh which helps you a lot when trades in the baron lane whereas you don't have that anymore so it's a little bit more difficult that's why i think he's a lot better in the jungle trendomir olaf pantheon uh, all these champions just struggle in general um you know trendomir is a better jungler pantheon is a better jungler and to be fair olaf's a better jungler i just don't think these champions fit really at the moment in the baron lane uh kale was obviously still kale i mean if you can scale and if you could do really well with kale then she's pretty good you know i think with items like terminus being added into the game is a great addition for kale and there are ways in which kale can actually you know carry but again it's getting to that point you know getting to level 12 level 15 etc and trying to get to that point to be able to carry uh nasus is just a worse version of kale i get a champion that infinitely scales into late game but again just doesn't really do too much and doesn't really do too much damage and just gets countered by any sort of cc or slows or anything like that so pretty difficult to play and then singe just runs around like a headless chicken and just doesn't really do anything basically all right into the jungle god jungle tier list was difficult um i was doing this on stream yesterday 
this is one of the most difficult tie uh difficult tiers i tier list i probably had to do uh you're gonna realize that because there are so many champions in the a tier at the moment which i think are you know fairly decent champions but they're not better than the champions in the s tier but also they're not as bad as the champions in the b tier and also there are just so many damn good junglers at the moment you know you look at the um the s plus tier all these junglers are just absolutely disgusting right now you know you think of kindred how strong kindred is in a moment even though she got the hotfix nerf she's still incredibly powerful she's still one of the best junglers out there incredibly strong talent got a bit of a nerf to his second ability if i remember correctly in terms of his jungle clear speed again still one of the best junglers out there still really really powerful these two champions are just banned every single game then you just like kind of fall back to these other champions hecarim still really strong really powerful super annoying to deal with a lot of crowd control and sustain lee sin as well also very good um again really mobile and great carry potential same with champions like shadow assassin kane evelyn and karzix all of these assassins are really good especially evelyn at the moment you know ap evelyn is just very very powerful uh with especially with first strike and also all the ap items are in the game infinity orb death cap etc etc and all most of these other champions also benefit from ghost blades uh, and then Xin Zhao as well i've also moved up into yes plus tier i think this champion has been getting like three or four buffs over the last few months and this champion is just incredibly powerful you know being able to isolate one target use your ultimate push everyone else away and kind of have that 1v1 duel against another champion the thing is with Xin Zhao and Lee Sin, you can play kind of this one-shot build. It's very high risk, high reward, where you go for first strike on both these champions, and you can try and make a difference with first strike and do a lot of one-shot damage. Again, you know, it's quite difficult to play, but I think both these champions, you can still go uh, for like Ghost Blade, Trinity Force, and go into like the Ruin Sterix Gauge, Death Stance, and be a bit more tankier, a bit more bruiser focused, uh, and still be really, really powerful in general. Uh, moving down to s tier there are some champions down here which are you know still really good overall and can still perform relatively well um aatrox i mean honestly i can probably move, move aatrox to s plus tier as well just because how strong he is in the jungle and how quick that he can clear through the jungle in general uh ross kane is still really good if you don't have the option to go blue kane if there's a lot of melee champions you can just play ross kane and still be really really you know really really strong wukong as i mentioned a lot stronger in the jungle just because of his team fight presence and what he can offer in team fights compared to the baron lane gragas i mean ap champions as i mentioned in general just very powerful and gragas has that insane one shot potential same with fizz as well i moved fizz back up into the s plus uh s tier sorry not s plus tier Moved Fizz back up into the S tier just because of how strong AP items are in general at the moment in this patch. Volley Bear is still really good. It benefits a lot from the Light Rift Maker item. Uh, lot of sustain, lot of crowd control. Also, the Tower Dive potential is just very strong. Uh, Yone, pretty good as well. Again, more of a carry, more of a champion that can jump in, do a lot of damage, and then jump away to safety. Jarvan with his one shot with his ultimate. Again, extremely powerful champion to play with a lot of lockdown and also a lot of burst damage. Vi, super easy with her ultimate. Uh, again, another champion that is kind of the same sort of bruiser, same as like Xin Zhao and Lee Sin. She doesn't do as much damage as them too, but she has the lockdown, which I think is actually very underrated right now with the lockdown because of how the game is, you know, kind of worked or, uh, kind of around assassins at the moment. Say you're against someone like a Talon. If a Talon tries to jump in or tries to assassinate your backline, you can play Vi, lock him down and do a bunch of damage as i mentioned a tier is an interesting one because most of these a tier champions i i think are pretty good and i think they're uh they all have benefits but they all have downsides as well um i think one of the most interesting champions in the a tier is definitely master yi since his rework i think i don't think master yi is insanely broken i don't think he is really really good i think he's super easy to play he's probably one of the best stronglers in low elo but as you go up and as you get to play with more experienced players that know how to play against Master Yi, then you find it a little bit difficult, especially against, you know, champions like Talon and Kindred and all of these sort of champions, because all these champions can be more of a carry than Master Yi. Uh, but if you can get ahead with Master Yi, then the champion's really, really good. I think there's a bit of a skill, um, a skill way, skillful way, I should say, of playing Master Yi now with his auto attack resets on his third ability but also now his second ability you take in 90% re reduced damage in the first few seconds or the first second I should say uh, just means that you can time it and also take reduced damage so I think Master is in a pretty decent spot um 
Gwen plus side is that she is super late game heavy. Um, AP items in general are just really, really powerful. Downside is that her jungle clear speed is not really that strong in the early game. And you kind of fall a little bit behind early on. But if you can farm up and do pretty well, then it's kind of nice. Shen farms the jungle pretty quickly. Doesn't really have too much in terms of ganks. You know, you can't really gank too much with Shen. Most time with Shen, you just kind of farm through the jungle, wait for the enemy jungler to gank, and then use your ultimate as kind of a counter gank. Then you can just farm through the jungle, farm through the major objectives, and try and help your team in that way. Also, late game, you can try and split push as well with Shen jungle if you want to. Uh, Rengar and Pantheon both have one-shot potentials, but at the same time, both of them are kind of predictable in a way. Uh, Rengar a little bit less predictable because you don't really know where the champion is unless you have a pink ward. Uh, Pantheon, you know where the champion's going to come in. You know where the champion is going to use his ultimate towards. And then you can just set up perfect. You know, you can set up like a Nautilus there or a tank or anyone at the front line and then just stand far, you know, as far away from Pantheon as possible. And then you're not going to get, you know, CC'd and you're not going to get one shot. You know, you can build Quicksilver. You can use things like Zaya Ultimate, for example, to dodge quite a lot of his abilities. Uh, Rengar on the other hand like I said you don't really know where he's coming from but again there are plenty of ways in which you can just CC Rengar and just easily lock him down. Nautilus doesn't have Horizon Focus anymore. Horizon Focus doesn't really work on Nautilus anymore um, but the champion can still work with items like Infinity Orb and Death Cap. Morgana one of the quickest jungle clear speeds in the entire game but I think that the champion just doesn't really offer too much to be fair. I think there are ways in which Morgana can definitely work if you get a pick or anything, but in general, just the champion doesn't really work. Um, Dina, pretty strong with the AP items. Same with Echo as well. You know, both these champions can be a carry with new AP items. Zed can still work pretty well. I think with the buffed Ghost, Ghost Blade, excuse me, um, means that Zed can be a bit more powerful in a jungle. Uh, but again, just gets countered by Stasis. You just buy Stasis and then Zed kind of loses out most of his damage. Uh, Nunu, I actually kind of want to play AP Nunu, uh, but obviously this Nunu build is just tank Nunu, and this tier list is just tank Nunu. Um, honestly, probably Nunu can move lower, to be fair. I just don't think Nunu has a place in the meta at the moment. There are not really ways in which you can lock down or... You know, the big thing about Nunu is kind of creating that gap between your uh, AD carry or your team in general to their team. The problem is, is that all these, you know, all these champions have jumps, have visibility, you know, can go through walls, jump 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 super speedy jump you know they all these champions have jumped so it's very difficult for nunu to kind of create that space at the moment uh, but i think the champion's still okay um olaf just doesn't really do that much damage to be fair i mean champ's not really that good i mean yeah he's okay he's not bad but he's not great at the same time honestly olaf can maybe move down as well um it's actually kind of funny that i do these tier lists and then afterwards i like I explain about all of these champions and i'm like yeah maybe that champion moves down maybe that champion moves up always kind of change my mind it's very difficult to do a tier list uh darius with phase rush i uh, can still carry quite a lot of teams um especially if you even you know if you can get his, your ultimate uh reset fiddlesticks really annoying to deal with really really cool champion as well uh, again with the ap items very very strong if you can use your uh vision to your advantage and also just stay in the fog of war you could do really well there Camille, really strong in the jungle. Um, again, lockdown, a lot of mobility. Problem is her jungle clear speed's not that not that um good. Riven, a lot of mobility, a lot of power. Again, just not really viable too much in the jungle. Same with Jace as well. Again, these champions are pretty strong. They're not as viable in the jungle, but they can work in the jungle if you want to play that. I mean, some of the B tier champions can work. Um, you know, Ramus is not too bad if you're against a lot of AD champions, or just AD carries in general, just because of you know, the Rune Infinity Edge and just all the AD champions or AD assassins that you might play against at the moment. Ramus has ways of being pretty good. You know, Mumu with the crowd control. Mumu can also be pretty good. Um, Neela is very hit or miss. Uh, she's one of the new champions I've added into the jungle tier list. Very hit or miss. Sometimes she works, sometimes she doesn't work. Um, but yeah, just rest these champions. You know, Shivana just takes too long and too, uh, too long to come online too long to scale with all of her stacks that she really needs again i really with kind of the skill difference that i was talking about trendomir i think is okay i mean trendomir might be the same as like most e whereas like trendomir low elo is pretty good but again the high elo you get, go up you know the easier it becomes to play against dr mundo is okay has decent jungle clear speed but doesn't really offer too much in the jungle in terms of ganks you know fiora is kind of the same as jace riven and camille where there are ways in which fiora can carry in the jungle but again a jungle clear speed is not that great Lilia just doesn't really do anything at all. 
And then little old Warwick in C tier. I don't know why this champion hasn't been buffed again, to be fair. I mean, this champion is pretty damn useless. So I'm not gonna lie. You know, every time I play against Warwick, I mean, the champion doesn't really do anything. You just buy Quicksilver, you Quicksilver his ulti, you escape, and then you're completely fine. I just, it, I think it's just the champion design in general. I just don't think the champion design is very good, in my opinion. Uh, moving on to mid lane, you're gonna see a bit of a theme uh, in the S plus tier. All these, all these champions and AP, are AP champions. I mean, that's just because the AP items at the moment are incredibly powerful. Horizon Focus, Infinity Orb, Death Cap, um, Rift Maker. All these items are just, you know, extremely powerful. And it's so difficult to put any AD champions in the S plus tier at the moment. You know, I had to move down champions like Jace, who are really, really powerful, just because of how strong these AP items are and how much of a big difference they make as well. You know, death cap, 55% ability power, infinity or being able to crit champions that are, you know, below 45% health. Rift Maker getting more true damage. Uh, just all of these items just make these AP champions, you know, very powerful. And the crazy thing is, the crazy thing is, you know, they were already powerful last patch as well. You know, casting was already powerful last patch, but just got even stronger. You know, bit of a weak, a bit, bit weak in the early game, but what we need to do is just play, play passive, farm up, scale get to level 12 or something and then you could just 1v9 you could just jump around with your ultimate doing insanely well again vladimir fairly weak in the early game but all you need is just a few levels a few items and you're just super annoying to deal with with your with your pool as well very powerful zoe a lot of poke damage a lot of catch potential some of you might see my clips of zoe you know one shot zoe builds that are going around at the moment champion just absolutely disgusting aurelian soul even after the aurelian soul nerfs again champion still really powerful arcane comet works really well on him as well to get stacks during the early game and this can help you you know help you a lot uh, later on again champion that scales super well syndra another champion that scales super well um with all of her stacks and all of her poke abilities and you know being able to get catches really really nice and akali i already mentioned in the barrel lane as well one of the best ap assassins one of the best champions and one of the best assassins at the moment in the game just because of how slippery she is and how much damage she can do but then again you know s s tier champions again are champions that can perform very well uh, against some of these mages above and just in general can perform very well you know you've got other ap mages down here like ziggs oriana ari and vex which i don't think they're as good as the champions in the s plus tier but are still champions that can work ziggs with horizon focus at the moment is very powerful with all the other ap items obviously oriana is very good ari and vex are also very good for catch potentials and just their crowd control in general um, so all of these AP mages you can still pick up as well. But AD champions in general are still pretty good in the mid lane. You know, Yasuo and Yone, I think, um, you know, a lot of players are actually building Terminus on these champions. Um, and again, got some pretty decent items like the Ruin Infinity Edge as well. And also the buff to Blade Rune King, which means that these champions got a little bit stronger. Lucian in mid lane with Pressy Attack, still really, really good and still very aggressive in the early game. If you can proc, proc that Pressy Attack, make these weak AP mages in the early game vulnerable, then you can get an advantage early on and use that advantage advantage just advantage to snowball the game and also jace is very good as well just with his poke and damage in general which is you know very very nice uh 80 80 champions again you know these are champions that have their plus size and also their downsides but in general it's just really really good um galio you know again ap items are very very powerful um the ap shield that you get with galio also pretty beneficial and also the ultimate as well can also be pretty beneficial for your team um but kind of difficult to play at times and doesn't have the same playmaking potential Akshan pretty decent in the mid lane does okay doesn't do great you know he's a not a bad champion but he's also a pretty decent champion uh, he can use his roam pretty well you know press attacks pretty good on him some of the other items that they've added now do pretty well on him echo mid lane again ap items really really powerful a lot of playmaker potential and also you can jump in and ulti back away to safety katarina if you get if you're against a lot of crowd control wouldn't recommend picking up katarina but again another champion that can scale pretty well and a champion that has a lot of playmaker potential with all of her mobility swain in the mid lane i think is i, I think swain might be pretty underrated again this patch i think you know items like rift maker uh, twin guard as well you know being able to stack up the armor and mr even quicker now rift maker getting the true damage quicker stacking that up quicker Swain could be underrated. I might have to play him a few more times, but I think he's pretty powerful. Every time I've played against Swain, uh, Swain, he's just been super annoying to deal with. He has so much healing now with Rift Maker. Obviously, he has the slows as well from Rylize, which gets really annoying to deal with. Twisted Fate, obviously, with his roams are really good. Nash's 2 is really good on him at the moment. Again, just AP items means that he has more one-shot potential with his gold card. 
Zed can still do pretty well mid lane as well with the, like Ghost Blades uh, and other items. Again, really strong playmaker potential, but again, can just be countered by uh, ultimate. Um, Diana doesn't do as well in mid lane as, as she does in the um, in the jungle, just because the champion doesn't scale as well as these other champions. You know, all these other champions can poke Diana and win Diana, uh, win against Diana in the lane, and also they all just outscale Diana in general. Zyra's pretty decent in mid lane uh, with the buff that she received to her plants being a little bit more tankier against AP champions means that she has a bit of an easier time in mid lane. Vagar, if you can get cages off and you can get a lot of damage off, then she, you know he could be really, really good. But again, if your cage is on cooldown, then you don't really do too much. Is pretty decent mid lane. Again, better in the jungle at the moment, in my opinion. Um, kind of struggles in the mid lane, gets poked down pretty easily, but can st you can still make it work if you want to. Lux mid, again, pretty good. Um, Arcane Comet is really, really good on her. You can also still go for first strike. And again, items like Horizon Focus are very, very powerful for her. I, I could move Lux up, to be fair. I mean, there, are, there is a uh, an opportunity maybe to move Lux up. But again, I just think Lux support is still better than Lux mid. Just because Lux support can still get... You know, you get less gold, but you still have the same sort of outcome with Lux. And I'd much rather have like other mid laner champions in general that has a lot more play pay, playmaking potentials rather than a champion that kind of has to sit there and rely on her uh, abilities. Dragas and Talon, again, much better in the jungle than the mid lane. Again, these champions are just going to get uh, outpoked by ranged champions and just going to fall behind in the early game. Kennen, pretty good in the mid lane, has that roam potential. He can try and, you know, make sure that he can roam and do quite a lot with his ultimate. Again, kind of what I said in the Baron lane is that if he uses ultimate and he gets exhausted or if he gets caught out or cc'd then kind of difficult to play i really uh, again probably a champion that can can move up but again around how difficult she is uh, to play uh b tier kaiser mid lane just isn't really a thing anymore uh, i might remove this to be fair kaiser mid lane is just not really a thing there's not really a way to play kaiser mid at the moment uh and to be honest like all, all these ap champions just destroy her in the early game to be fair and she doesn't really scale as well anymore uh, Annie can do pretty decent, you know, if you can catch enemies off guard and if you can play around uh, Fog of War, then she could be pretty good. But if you can't one shot, then she's a bit difficult. Seraphine just doesn't really do too much. She's okay as a support. She's not really great as a mid laner. She's not really a great carry. Corky just isn't really good at the moment. Unfortunately, it just takes way too long to come online. Karma again, you can do pretty decent with her poke damage, but I'd rather other poke champions uh, in general just because they have more damage. Pike mid, you can make this work. You can roam around. You can't clear the mid lane as well anymore, but you can use your roam um, to try and get other lanes ahead or get your jungler ahead. But be careful because most of these other champions do have quite a lot of wave clear. And if you lose a few minions, then you're going to be quite far behind if you don't get an advantage in other lanes. Uh, then C tier are kind of the same champions, you know, Morgana and Brand. I think both these champions are just annoying with Arcane Comet. They don't actually do too much like Morgana just puts her pull down in the mid lane and just annoy with Arcane Comet that's about it same with Brand as well but hey like if you come up against like a Lucian or you know an Akali at level 5 a Zoe at level 5 a Vladimir at level 5 a Kastin they can all just jump on top of you and just burst you 100 to 0 and then there's nothing you can do and again Kale can do pretty decent in the mid lane Kale is probably one of the only other champions that can actually um you know they lose against most of these s plus tier she loses against most of these s plus tier champions but she might be able to outscale them there might be a possibility that she can outscale them and still do pretty decently i ad carry i think there's going to be uh, a lot of people intrigued of what i think of ad carries at the moment uh, i i don't think too much has changed i think the big thing is uh rune infinity edge being really really powerful uh which is why i've put uh, all the three champions that I have at the moment in the S plus tier, all these champions benefit so, so well with uh, Rune Infinity Edge. Zaya, obviously, with her buffs as well. I think she was a bit of a situational pick before. I mean, th the thing with Zaya is that she's a very front to back carry, which basically means, you know, Zaya just wants to hit the front line, stack up her feathers, and play to kill the front line first before she can try and reach the back line. She's not really good at chasing enemy champions compared to someone like you know caitlin or lucian that can kind of dash forward and do a lot of damage she was a bit of a situational champion before with that sort of play style but now because of the buffs that she received you know more attack speed on the second ability more damage on her third ability she's just good in every scenario to be fair she just does an incredible amount of damage uh caitlin hasn't really changed just got 
even stronger to be honest with you with ruin infinity edge champion still has a lot of range and have lots has a lot of poke damage in general and she still scales pretty decently lucian with pta again kind of the same as what i said in mid lane if you can make someone vulnerable in the early game you do a lot of extra bonus damage and you actually scale pretty well now with lucian thanks to the rune infinity edge and all the other items that, that got added um you know you could do rune infinity edge bloodthirster slurry charge blade you can even go to grudge now if you want to and build another tank item uh, i build another crit item if you want to go back to kind of the serrated grudge build he does a lot of burst damage now with Rune Infinity Edge. You know, Rune Infinity Edge going back to 225% crit is just insane for some of these carries. Uh, Tristana still has the same late game power and still has late game range and just extremely powerful in general. I think the reason why she's not really in S plus tier is that she kind of relies a bit on uh, in, bit on enchanter supports rather than engage supports, whereas all these champions work with enchanters and also work well with engage supports as well. Ezreal relies a lot on skill shots. Uh, he's a super safe AD carry to play. You can farm up early games, say play super safe, but uh, again, can be pretty difficult. Zeri, I think her skill ceiling is definitely what's keeping her down and just how the champion works in general. It's very difficult for Zeri to try and focus backline champions or focus the champion that you want to focus because of the way her, uh, way her auto attacks work. Her auto attacks are skill shots and they can't be focused whereas you know other champions you can actually focus a champion or target lock onto a champion and focus that champion down whereas zeri can be blocked you know zeri's auto attack can be blocked by minions and monsters etc etc uh severe really good wave clear uh, really good early game as well spell shield can save her a lot and also an ultimate her ultimate is great in team fights Varus, there are so many different builds now that you can go with Varus, to be honest with you. You've got the on here build, you've got the poke build, you've got the AP hybrid build that you can go. Um, I think the champion is still pretty good. Yes, I'm moving down to S tier. I just think because these champions that build Ruin Infinity Edge are just a lot better at the moment. Um, but again, you know, Varus can still work pretty well. Samira, super underrated this patch. One, actually one of the best AD carries. The reason why I have her in S tier is just that like players in general don't really understand how her passive works or how her ultimate works to try and get up a passive and if you can make full use and if you know how to stack up the passive as quick as possible then she's a great champion to play she's absolutely phenomenal she does so much damage uh again especially with rune infinity edge Kaisa's has moved back up i think that uh, her on hit build is just really really powerful right now i think items like terminus the rune blade the rune king you can build into crit as well if you want to again with the rune infinity edge you can build uh blade rune king and rune infinity edge yes you're going to lose like 200 hp but the damage you deal is absolutely disgusting and you have the healing anyway thanks to items like bloodthirster also your boots and also you have the survivability thanks to your ultimate and also your third ability really really good champion Jin as well also moved back up into S tier. Again, another champion I think benefits a lot from Ruin Infinity Edge. I think the champion is actually pretty good now. You know, you can scale pretty decently. You could do a lot more damage now with Jin, which is great. Uh, Jinx and Vayne probably have an opportunity to move up. Again, kind of same with Tristana going down to S tier. Jinx and Vayne go down to A tier because they rely more on enchanters rather than uh, themselves in a way. Draven's pretty decent, but again, pretty hit or miss. You know, sometimes you can get ahead with Draven, but if the enemy laners know how to play against Draven, just play passive and don't give you kills, then you're kind of stuck. Um, Misfortune, I might have to play Misfortune a bit more. I think Lethality Misfortune could definitely work pretty well. She doesn't have her um, her rework yet. I, th I still think she's pretty good. Uh, Callista did get a bit of a uh, hotfix buff. Um, you know, a little bit of extra damage, a little bit of extra HP in general. I have to play Callista more to see if she deserves to be up in the S tier. I don't think the champion is, though. I think the champion's still going to be down in A tier at the moment. Uh, again, I just don't think her damage is really there right now. Um, Ash is still okay. You know, you can build the on-hit build. I think she still works okay. She works more as a utility AD, AD carry. It doesn't really do damage too well. It doesn't really do that much damage. Um, Neil is pretty decent. She's okay. She's not too bad. I mean... She just struggles a lot during the laning phase but if you can survive the laning phase then she could be a pretty decent carry corky kind of what i said in mid lane that she you know corky takes too long to scale up but can still be pretty good and then twitch is down here as well again i'll probably have to play twitch a bit more but i think the problem with twitch is that your early game is just too weak and you can't really scale that much into the late game then finally we have support support is the last tier for this this role Whoops, as I accidentally spilled water everywhere. That is absolutely great. Uh, anyway, <laughs> uh, support. Right, so support tier list. Uh, let's see what we have. So, 
Uh, S plus tier. Um, I've moved Nautilus up into the S plus tier. I think Nautilus is one of the best tanks at the moment um, in the S plus tier. I don't think there are any other champion, any other tanks that are really stronger than Nautilus at the moment. Um, I have literally got water all over my keyboard. I'm an absolute idiot. I'm kind of like shaking my water as I'm recording a video at the moment, just making sure that my keyboard doesn't break because that'll be uh, a great way to start off the... Uh, Great way to start off the day. Anyway, as I was saying, um, Nautilus, yeah, as I mentioned, best tank, so much crowd control. I mean, the timing of the crowd control as well is just extremely powerful. And again, especially because we're in this meta where we're um, we're all about, you know, assassins and squishy champions. I think tanks like Nautilus with a lot of crowd control, you can lock down these assassins very, very easily. And then you, you know, if your team follows up, then you can burst down a champion that you could be the main carry for your team. That's why Nautilus for me is S plus tier. Yumi, this champion is just, I, 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 like, please delete this cat. I don't know. Like, the champion stats are not even that good, but, like, you just put a Yumi on, like, I, I don't know, Kane, Lee Sin, Talon, Kindred. You give these champions more damage, and she's just super annoying to deal with. She still has the healing. She still has her ultimate as well. She's, like, not even that good, but she's just annoying. Like, you know, I still ban her most games just because of... You know, when you play against the Yumi, it's just the annoyance that you get when playing against Yumi. And the champion still offers so much healing and, you know, can still poke. I mean, the poke damage is not even great. I think it's just the healing and the damage in general. The healing is super annoying and the extra damage you get on your second ability on champions also super annoying. Uh, two of the best carry junglers though, Pike and Lux. Lux still stays up here. I think she's still really, really powerful. Um especially with again the new ap items pike one of the best carry supports i always recommend pike to supports that want to be more of a carry rather than being a supportive champion in a way lot playmaker potential pike can basically 1v9 any single game i think the champion is has so much potential um s tier bit of a mix between you know some um enchanters but also some tanks uh, in terms of tanks we have thresh leona and brom uh, Thresh still is pretty decent, you know, with his uh, crowd control. You know, he, he has his lantern to get people away to safety, and he has pretty decent amount of playmaker potential. Leona kind of does the same thing as Nautilus, where you can have a lot of single target CC, but Nautilus just does it better and also has lower cooldowns. So that's why Leona's down here. But Leona could be a little bit, a bit, little bit tankier. Brom kind of does the same thing as well, but Brom is a more of a protective AD carry, and your carry needs to focus more around the uh, passive of Brom to actually stun enemy champions because Brom by himself doesn't really stack his passive that well, but the champion still works pretty well. Uh, Rakan, honestly, play Rakan just for AP. I mean, with how broken the support, um, the AP items are at the moment, you can just play Rakan AP and just one shot everyone. Again, Karma, kind of the same thing. These two champions are kind of carry champions. Karma, same thing for AP, really, really powerful. Lulu can still work with some champions as an enchanter. I think she can work pretty well. Soraka also can work decent as an enchanter. I think the problem with enchanters at the moment, why I don't have any real enchanters in the S plus tier, I don't really call Yumi as an enchanter. She's just a annoying cat that just sits on champions give them gives them bonus damage the difficulty with enchanters in the moment like lulu janna and soraka is that there's so much one shot and there's so much burst damage in the game that these shields that you get from the likes of lulu janna or even the healing from soraka yeah that's not enough you're still going to get one shot even through the healing even through the extra hp you get from lulu that doesn't make any difference you're still going to get one shot which i think is the difficulty i think janna is probably one of the best enchanters because she has uh, a lot of ways to actually protect her team through uh, movement speed on a W, tornadoes if you can land them correctly, and also her ultimate as well. Not more peeling. Whereas Lulu Soraka just heal and shield and hope for the best. Uh, I move Sona down kind of for that same thing where Sona, I mean Sona can probably do it pretty decently, but you know Sona doesn't really do too much. Again, healing and shielding doesn't really do too much. You just get one shot by assassins in this game at the moment. Kind of pointless. Um, Nami again as an enchanter. Um, Probably has playmaker potential with her ultimate and also her bubble, but again, just doesn't really offer too much. Seraphine, kind of same as what I said in mid lane. It's pretty decent, just doesn't really do too much. There are other tank supports here that I think can definitely be uh, a bit underrated. Uh, Alistar, especially, you know, if you get headbutt pulverize combo, then it could be good. I think the problem is that the headbutt pulverize combo is just too long of a cooldown for how short of crowd control you have. You know, you compare Alistar's crowd control to Nautilus. Nautilus has his auto attacks, his Q, his ultimate, 
his uh slow from his um third ability also the slow from his auto attacks as well from his second ability alistar has headbutt pulverize which knocks him up for a second or just over a second and that's it that's all you have so that's the big difference between them in my opinion um swain could be pretty good as well again you could just be a beefy frontline tank Orn probably has a lot of you know it has a lot of ways to get crowd control going as well same with gragas and galio these champions have a lot of crowd control and you can get it going pretty easily but are a bit, bit more difficult to play in my opinion um i think that you know things like you know gragas ultimate you have to have a bit of skill for you know on ultimate as well and galio etc etc you know the i mean the champions are still good but they're just not as good Senna and Zyra again they could be carry supports in the bot lane Zyra I mean I played against Zyra a few times actually I played with Zyra a few times as well with my duo my duo plays Zyra sometimes and then this champion can be annoying at times but again I don't think she's as good uh, Ash could be okay not too bad um decent amount of poke can be pretty decent with Arcane Comet as well you can go Conqueror you can also go Arcane Comet with Ash um eh, she's okay she's not bad she can just poke and just do a lot of damage if you can catch someone out with your ultimate then her uh, ultimate then happy days set's pretty good um decent amount of cc uh, again a bit more difficult to play because you have to rely on your cc landing let's crank if you land your hook it can actually be pretty good especially in this assassin meta you hook you ultimate you knock them up and you can try and one shot an assassin but if you miss your hook you're kind of useless and morgana kind of same as what i said in the mid lane she just puts a pull down that's it has all she does it doesn't really do much else and that is everything that is the tier list that is every single champion run through for patch 5.1 hopefully you enjoyed it hopefully you enjoyed me talking through every single champion i only really do this for every major patch and then every small patch i just talk about the changes to champions and whether i move champions up and down just to kind of save my voice because talking for 40 minutes straight is a little bit difficult even though i stream for a few hours a day but Sometimes I sit there playing the actual game instead of sitting in front of the camera talking about the game. Um, but yeah, hopefully you enjoyed the tier list. If there are any champions that you think deserve to move up or down or you think you have different opinions, always leave a comment. Uh, I always read through the comments. I always reply to the comments as well. And I always give my sort of opinion if you have any questions or if you think a champion deserves to be up or down. I always listen to you all. I always like to see your comments. So yeah, keep them coming in. But as always, I appreciate you all tuning into the video. Take care of yourselves. Good luck on the season 13 grind and I'll see you all in the next one video. Peace.